In May, Framer announced Framer Sites, which is their new product for building website. And it looks like it is trying to compete directly with Webflow. I've seen the video and actually the video looks pretty cool and exciting. And so I wanted to take it for a ride. And on this video, I want to compare both of them and give you a hint about you know, which one is good for what and how to think about this. Now I do want to say how I am thinking about this product. This is now 2022. And there are so many website building tools out there from you know, Wix, Squarespace, uh, all the WordPress builders, all the landing page builders, Figma plugins. So th the, the, if, if you want, if you're a designer and you want to build a very simple landing page, there are so many tools available for you out there. And yet we're all very hyped in the design community about Webflow. And the reason is that Webflow uh, enables us to not just do s the simple stuff, but actually do everything, right? And so it enables our creative freedom, but at a cost, right? It's, it has a learning uh, curve. It's a little bit more complicated. And so Framer is coming out with the promise of you'll be able to do this super, super fast. Anybody will be able to do this. So what I really look into when I'm considering these alternatives and trying to compare them is, all right, it's going to be faster, but is it going to be as robust? And will I be able to do the same kind of like complex stuff? Because easy stuff, I know I can get the easy stuff done on many platforms, but let's see if it can compete on the more advanced kind of complex types of website. So that's what how I'm thinking about this. Let's take them out for a little demo and I'll show you both how they're each different and unique in their way. And I'll sum up my conclusions afterwards. Okay, so I have a new Framer project open and a new Webflow project open. And let's try to build something and see how they to behave and what's different about them. So here in the Framer interface, I can insert, um, I've got some basic components here and also some ready-made components. And also in Webflow, I have the add panel and I have all of my elements here and also some layouts. Now. To be fair, when I'm building in Webflow, I never use these ready-mates and probably I will not use them in Framer as well, but I'm going to use them right now just to show you how they to behave and how things are actually structured and working. So let's go ahead into the layout and take some kind of a hero section and add it right here. And also maybe go ahead and add this, um, this kind of like features section right below it. And already you can see that in Framer, we have a layers panel. So they are very much like a design software. They're, you're thinking in layers and uh, layers go one on top of the other ones. And also, I guess the artboard or the, the desktop is not containing the whole content that we have on the page, which I basically think is weird. But so let's go ahead and pick the desktop and give some space to what we have here. Whoops. And then also put the features section Let's drag the features and drag it below the hero section. So very much like a design software, I have to make sure that it's rearranged. They're not stacking one on top of them, uh, one after another. And I also think that it's weird that the, although there are you know, layers here, I wanna put the hero, the hero before the features. Now in Webflow, let's do the same. Let's go ahead and take some kind of a hero section that looks pretty much the same, drag it in here. So it goes in here and let's take another layout of maybe like a feature section and drag it below. Now you can see that in Webflow, they're stacked one after another and the, the page is whatever content that we have here. Now let's see how this is actually built inside of Framer. So what we have here is we have the desktop and inside we have this uh, hero video and you can see this icon. This icon basically means that things are organized and they're calling it a stack. But if you're familiar with HTML, CSS and you're familiar with Webflow, this is basically a flex box. So this is a flex box that's just organized uh, vertically and you can see these lines. This is, we can actually go ahead. This is the flex gap and you can see it here. It's even called gap. Um, so basically what we have here is a flex box that's organized you know, uh, vertically. We can also change it to horizontally, but that's not what we want. Um, so basically this is how it's set up and you know if I move things around you know you can see that the the order of the stack is getting changed um, so we have this so basically and the, the button itself is also as you can see a flex box but this one is organized uh, from left to right I don't know why but this is how the button is organized and we have this video here okay 
And this is versus Webflow, where what do we have here? We have uh, basically a section. Inside of it, we have a container. And inside of it, we have this content hero wrapper, which is basically um, also a flex box. You can see here it's organized as a flex vertical. So it's basically the same thing, right? They're organized in the same way, but it's basically different names for uh, the same interface, right? So here they are organized this way. We can also uh, in Webflow organize them horizontally, but we don't want to do this. So this is how they're stacked. The only difference is that Webflow put things in a container, which makes sense. And container is just holding things so that they're not too wide in the page. And in, uh, in Framer, they're not putting things in a container, right? So if I go ahead and make the website wider, you can see things will get wildly wild. And this is not what we want. So I'm, I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and do this manually. If I just go into the hero video and into the size and set some maximum width to this, let's say uh, 1,100 1, pixels. Uh, just to make sure that yeah you know if the um, if the page is wider it's not going to get too wide so this is great so we've created a container uh, now as you can see in Webflow we already have a container and we have a class for it the container and we can adjust it right and uh, so let's adjust this from nine uh, thousand and nine hundred to you know eleven hundred and now this has changed I don't know why they also put a maximum width on this but let's remove this. Um, so I have this container in both sections and they are using the same class. So when I change the hero section uh, container with, it's also applied here. But here inside Framer, we don't actually have the concept of classes. So I actually can't reuse this, right? I'm going to have to go into this feature section and manually set the maximum width of this you know, to the same thing. And every section that I'm going to have to create right now, I'm going to have to reapply this because I don't have the concept of classes. We do have styles, by the way, we have text styles, and you can see this right here in the assets. It's basically, you already have styles that are pre-created, um, and you can, of course, add more text styles. So, you know, if I'm picking up this text, Right here, I can choose whatever text style I want or add some new text styles. So we do have styles for the text, but we don't really have styles for anything else, right? If we do want to, for example, um, create interactions or something like this, we have to turn things into components. So let's see how we do this, because this is a different concept than uh, what we have in uh, in Webflow. In Webflow, for this button, for example, you know, it's called button primary. And if I want to, for example, create a hover state for it, I can just go ahead here and move. Automatically, I have states for it. So I can go into the hover state. I can make some changes, like let's say uh, it's, it becomes blue on hover. Um, and so I already have that. So that's how I would create that. Here, if I want to create this hover state, I'm gonna to have to uh, turn this into a component. Uh, let's call it button, okay. And now I'm going to have to create a new state, hover state for this. And then let's change the, um, yeah, the background color to blue. And now I'm gonna to have to go back and let's preview this. Um, so now we've created a hover state for this. And maybe this is a good good place to talk about interactions in general. So we've created a very simple uh, hover interaction, but with Webflow, I can create like really dramatic uh, interactions. For example, I can create an interaction that if I hover on top of this, so let's go ahead and pick the primary button and add an interaction. So when I'm actually hovering over this, some new animation happens, right? So maybe I want the image to move or grow, for example. So let's go ahead and do grow image and now select this image and do scale. So whenever I'm hovering on top of this button, this image is going to scale to maybe 1.2. I don't know why, but let's do this and let's preview. So now I can go ahead and do this. And now I've created a custom interaction and obviously in Webflow I can do whatever I want and animate any property I want. Here inside of Framer, we can add some, what they call effects, actually they're not proper animations. So I can go ahead and I have a very, like three options, right? Appear, scroll appear and scroll speed, which is basically their name for creating like parallax effect. So if I want to create an appear effect, I'm just going to click this and then on load, you know, you can scale in um, and that's basically, you can change the 
settings of the effect, but basically it's a ready-made effect. And then I'm going to preview this and you've seen what happened here. So we can create some nice basic animations, but it's very, very limited to these three things. While in Webflow, it's basically unlimited to whatever it is that you want to create. One more thing, by the way, that um, I was struggling with when I was playing around with them. One of the key things that we're doing when we're building sections is we might choose like a hero section and we, we can define, we want the height of this section to be, you know, a um, hundred, a hundred vertical height to take the whole space of the screen. Now here in Framer for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe they'll add this later on, but right now I can't really do uh, you know viewport height. So I can either do fixed or relative. So I can't really do this thing of taking up the whole screen, which is super, super common in web design. I do this probably on every website that I build. So this is kind of annoying for me at the moment, but I'm pretty sure they'll add this later on. Let's talk about CMS because of course, if you want to build real website, they have to be dynamic. So uh, Framer's CMS is actually pretty close. They've built this pretty close to what Webflow has. So you can go here and add a collection and then you create a new collection. Uh, let's maybe call this blog posts. And I've created this immediately. I can create new items. It does not in Webflow, you know, if I will go ahead now and create a new collection, um, immediately it will show me what kind of fields do we want, right? So if this is blog posts, um, blog posts, of course, Webflow has some templates, but I can go ahead and then add a field of, you know, here is the content or content, or I can add whatever fields I want to the CMS to create a custom CMS. Here they've created the default for me. I can go ahead and edit the fields and I can see that by default, they just have title, slug, and content. And I can add a few more here. So plain text, formatted text, link, images, color, toggle. Webflow is way more robust, I think, in terms of what they have here in the custom fields. But the one that I think is most important, um, there's actually two. Number one is date, which is very, very useful in uh, CMS collections. Uh, and the second one is multi-ref. So with Webflow, I can create uh, multiple collections and then work together with them. So if I have, you know, a collection of blog posts, I can have a collection of categories. And so the clients can then go ahead and create both new category items, and then they can use them in their blog posts. Here, you know, I can just create blog posts, but I cannot create another collection to work together with it. Um, also, I don't have lists here. So the CMS is pretty limited versus what we have with Webflow right now. As you can see, they are both kind of different and Framer is more, actually I think Framer is more like Editor X versus Webflow in the sense that it's trying to simplify the whole CSS HTML concept into things that feel to designers more native, but by doing this, they're actually, uh, you know, abstracting a lot of things. And my gut feeling is that while it looks faster to get started and easier. You don't have to think about the structure. You don't have to think about classes. When you'll get into actual complex website, the, the reasons that, you know, made this faster are actually going to make it things slower for you to build and maintain and keep consistency on big actual products uh, or, and, and websites. So my gut feeling at the moment, besides functionality, and I do believe that Framer are going to add additional functionality, but, if we're talking conceptually, I do think that the, the concept of um, abstracting a lot and making it easier to get started might have limitations when you're getting into actual complex real world projects that are beyond the very simple landing page. So for now, I'm going to stick with Webflow and going to keep working with it, but I'm, I am going to keep my eye on Framer and see how it develops and excited to see where it grows in the future. Let me know in the comments what you think about both of these uh, products. If you give Framer websites a try, I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.